hello everyone in this video tutorial we're going to be talking about concentration calculations and we'll look at some examples of diluting or strengthening your pharmaceutical preparation okay so basically as a pharmacist from time to time you will be required to for example compound preparations that have a different concentration a different strength than that which is available as a marketed product or as a manufactured product and in being able to dilute or concentrate a product you need to understand that the strength of a pharmaceutical preparation can be increased or decreased by changing the proportion of active ingredient to the whole so what i mean by that is if you, in the morning you started off with a, a cup of coffee and you felt it was too strong you, you basically would want to add some water to it that's most like the first thing you do some water or some milk now what you just did is you change the proportion of your coffee in there to the total volume right same way if you felt it wasn't strong enough you could for example evaporate some of the water or you could basically add more coffee to it either way what you just did is you change the proportion of your active ingredient which is your coffee to your total volume okay so that is the kind of same approach that we use when we diluting or diluting and then strengthening a product now along the same line it's important to understand something um, which we talked about earlier that if you have a, a product a pharmaceutical preparation that has a certain specified concentration and you multiply that by the quantity of the preparation it will give you the amount of solute in there the quantity of solute in there now this is important because we are mostly going to be using the CQ equation in our computation and CQ basically refers to concentration times quantity okay so it's important to understand that because you always want to keep track of the amount of solute in there because you're going to be changing the proportion of that to the total quantity of your preparation okay so let's look at an example um, where we can apply this um, CQ scenario right so you have a situation where you calculate the amount in milligrams of potassium permanganate in 90 ml so your 90 ml is your total preparation and your concentration is 1 is to 500 okay so here what is happening is your concentration is 1 is to 500 so you have 1 gram in 500 ml you multiply that by the total quantity of your preparation which is 90 ml and that gives you 0 0.18 grams 180 milligrams so what this says is in this 90 ml you have 180 milligrams in that you understand very good so now if for example you change the total volume from 90 to 100 your amount of solute in there is not going to change you're still going to have 180 milligrams but because you increase the quantity your total quantity your concentration will drop it will drop from um, 1 is to 500 it become more diluted okay so let's see what that means in terms of the CQ equation right the CQ equation is basically an encapsulation of a mass balance you're keeping track of mass you're auditing the mass in there you're auditing the amount of active ingredient that you have in your pharmaceutical preparation and so what I'm you seeing right now is the general form if you could have as many um, different sources of your active ingredient in there right and so if you had n sources, it will be C1 times Q1 plus C2 times Q2 plus C3 times Q3 plus all the way up to Cn times Qn. And that should be equal to the concentration of your, fi your final concentration and then your final co um, quantity, the product of those two, right? Because your mass will, cannot suddenly disappear, right? So whatever you put in is what you should end up having, okay? But more often than not, as it turns out, when it comes to most of these pharmaceutical um, calculations or preparations, you end up having a reduced form where you have C1, Q1 equals CFQF. And your C1 is the drug concentration in your original preparation. Your Q1 is the quantity of the original preparation. Your CF is the 
concentration or your final concentration after diluting or strengthening or concentrating your product and then your QF is the final quantity after diluting or after strengthening your product okay so let's look at, at an example and that will help illustrate um, how you use this approach it says here that you want to dilute an ointment which originally is at 14 percent sulfur and the way you're going to do that is you're going to add some petrolatum to it right to make a final quantity of 60 grams of the ointment that has a concentration of 10 percent sulfur now what is asking is how much or how many grams of the 14 percent sulfur ointment and how many grams of petrolatum will be necessary to make the dilution so when you think about it carefully it's always important at least to have a physical picture of what is going on right so you are going to you start off with 14 percent sulfur and if since we know the concentration if we knew the quantity that we are adding we can determine the amount of sulfur in grams or in milligrams that we are actually starting off with now we're going to dilute that by adding petrolatum so to dilute it means that we need to add something that has a lower concentration than the 14 percent and because our final product must have a concentration of 10 percent then we obviously have to use something that has a lower amount of sulfur than 10 percent right and so here we are using petrolatum and petrolatum basically has zero percent sulfur in there okay you're going to end up with your product that has a certain final concentration 10 percent and then the total quantity is 60 grams so this is kind of like to give you a physical picture now if we put in some of the information from the example we'll find out that for the 14 percent sulfur we know the concentration but we do not know the quantity that's what we are calculating for we also have an idea of the concentration in petrolatum is zero there's no sulfur there's no sulfur in petrolatum so that concentration is zero in your final product you have all the information that you need to determine the amount in there okay so 10 percent that's weight by weight here in your final product times your quantity 60 grams so that tells you that in your final preparation you should have basically about six grams of sulfur in your final product that's what it's saying because 10 grams over 100 grams times 60 that's 600 over six over yeah so that's six grams you have in there now what let's see how you use the cq equation to basically address this issue and it's important to know that your 60 grams is going to be the sum of your q1 and then your q2 because that's that those are the two constituents going in there and your final product must be the sum of those two okay so this is our general equation one more time and basically we have two sources in there so if you put in the information and this is with regards to sulfur we are we are interested in how much sulfur is in there how much sulfur we are starting with how much sulfur we are going to end up with okay so you multiply the 14 percent by q1 which you do not know and you add q2 times zero percent of because your petrolatum has no sulfur in there okay and that should be equal to your 10 percent times your 60 grams so basically because zero times q2 is zero that term drops out and that is why i said most often than not your uh, general equation will reduce to the c1 q1 equals cf qf kind of situation so that's what we have right here so now if we solve for Q1 using algebra, we are going to have 42.9 grams. Okay. And so because we know that Q1, that's the amount of your 14% sulfur in there, plus the amount of your petrolatum should be equal to 60 grams, we can easily determine Q2 by subtracting 42.9 grams from 60 grams. And that gives us 17.1. So basically by connecting the using the mass balance approach we just can easily determine how much of each constituent that we need you see that's really easy and it's really um, exciting to do 
Now let's look at the situation. That was a, the first example was about diluting. This example talks about strengthening your product, making your product more concentrated. Okay. So now this example says how many grams of pure coal tar, coal tar should be added to 36 grams of 4% coal tar ointment to make a 10% coal tar ointment. So you are jumping from 4% to 10%. You are making it more concentrated, which means we need to add a source of coal tar to our product, our original product, in such a way that it, that source has a higher concentration of strength than the 10 percent that's the only way you can make it more concentrated okay so physically kind of like to help you have a mental picture this is how it could look like okay so you're starting off with four percent times 36 grams and because we know these two we can easily compute the amount of um of quota in our original product is going to be four percent times 36 so four divided by 100 times 36 that tells us the actual amount now to that we are going to add pure quota okay and so what that means is is a hundred percent quota totally pure hundred percent what we do not know is how much quota to add in such a way that our final product will be ten percent okay so this gives you a physical picture. This is kind of like what is going on. And it's important also to keep track of um, your total quantity. So your 36 grams plus your the amount of quota that you take should be equal to your final quantity. Okay. Now we are going to use the C1Q1 equation to, or the CQ equation to determine our quantities that we require. Okay, or the amount of quota that is needed. So the way it works is we have two sources one more time. You have 4% times 36, that's your original preparation, and your 100% quota times the quantity that you need. And that should be equal to your 10%, which is the strength of your final product, and then your QF, which is your final quantity. Now, like I mentioned earlier, your QF is equal to 36 plus 32. So we can substitute that wherever we see QF. And so now we have an algebraic equation or a linear equation with one unknown, which can easily be solved. And in this example, your second term doesn't drop out. So you basically have two components contributing as always. So now if you solve for Q2 by going through the algebra, you are going to end up with Q2 being equal to 2.4 grams. Okay. So if your Q2 is equal to 2.4 grams, that's how much of your 100% quota that you will take. Right. So that is really easy once you um, know how to handle the CQ equation. You can basically determine anything associated with your preparation when it comes to diluting or concentrating your preparation. Now, it so happens that um, from time to time, you have to be diluting acids. And the way it turns out is that when you have an undiluted or on a, a concentrated acid, it's normally expressed as weight to weight. But then when you dilute it, we have it in weight to volume. So I just feel it's important to have an understanding of how you do this so that you can easily do this in lab or wherever you are required to do it. Okay. So we'll start off with our general equation and because they are basically two, uh, it's just your original and your final, it will reduce to C1Q1 equals CFQF. So we can substitute in the information. So 90%, 95% weight by weight is 95 grams and 100 grams. That's our concentration. If we multiply that by the quantity which we do not know, that will give us the amount of sulfuric acid in there. Okay, and so that should be equal to our diluted acid, which is 10% weight by volume. Weight by volume, so that is 10 grams in 100 ml times the total volume of your diluted acid, which is 2000 ml. So now you could solve for Q1. 
using algebra and q1 is 200 grams divided by 0.95 and that turns out to be 210.5 grams now this is in weight that's in grams but the question says how many milliliters so the added step here is you will divide that quantity that you just determined by the specific gravity after converting that to density so if you convert 1.82 to density um, that will be multiplying that by one gram per ml of water and it still gives the same number so you divide that by 1.82 grams per milliliter units are not there but it should be there and that should end up being 115.67 ml so that is the volume of your of the higher concentrated or the undiluted sulfuric acid that you need okay so that's how you go about those kind of problems you first use the cq equation to determine quantity and divide that quantity by your density now let's look at diluting alcohols as well okay so from time to time you also have to have preparations where you are um, diluting alcohols and then your general equation reduces to the c1 q1 equals cf qf's kind of scenario and so if we start off with 85 percent five um of a uh, 5000 ml of 85 percent alcohol and wanted to dilute it to 50 percent what what how will you do that so basically you put in your information and you solve for your qf which is in this case the quantity of your 50 percent volume by volume and that gives you 8500 ml so that is the total volume right but how you do that is you basically have to add 3500 which is the difference between the 5000 that you started with and then the 8500 that you ended up with so the 3500 will be the volume of water that you add remember you are ch changing the proportion of your active ingredient to the whole the amount of alcohol in there does not change it's just that your volume increases right so the proportion changes and so your concentration would also change okay so normally what you do is you solve for your q and then you subtract the original volume from your final volume and that gives you the amount of water that you need now let's talk a little bit about trituration historically you there used to be a situation where you have official preparations now don't get this mixed up with the pharmaceutical process where you reduce particle size by grinding it in a mortar that's not what we're talking about here this trituration refers to basically some kind of diluting of a, of a powder right and it used to be or it normally is a 1 to 10 um, dilution so what that means is you take one part of your drug and nine parts of diluent which normally is lactose okay so it's important at least to have some understanding of how you can use this approach when it comes to dilution so in this example it says how many milliliters of an injection prepared by dissolving a hundred milligrams of a one is to ten trituration of mechloethamine hydrochloride in sufficient water is uh, for injection to prepare 10 ml of the injection is required to obtain 5 milligrams of the drug so basically you want to have 5 milligrams of the drug that's what is required and you have 100 milligrams of a 1 is to 10 trituration so the first thing you need to know is in that 100 milligrams of trituration because it's a 1 is to 10 ratio you have 10 milligrams in there so 1 divided by 10 times 100 that's where the 10 milligrams is coming from right so basically what is 100 milligrams of titration means is you have 10 milligrams of drug 90 milligrams of lactose okay now the second thing to note is you are going to dissolve this 100 milligrams in the 10 ml injection right so you're putting everything in there that means you actually have 10 milligrams in the 10 ml so that's what we see here set up as a proportion so 10 in each of the 10 ml injection you have 10 milligrams what volume must you take to provide you 5 milligrams so you set up a proportion as shown and you end up with x equals 5 so as you can tell we looked at using the cq equation to really help with 
um, dilute, understanding how to dilute and strengthen our pharmaceutical products. And then we looked at an example of how you can use um, how you can do computations using trituration. So hopefully it's clear and you can easily solve all kinds of questions. And if you still have additional um, queries, just send me an email. It's mdanqua at csu.edu. M-D-A-N-Q-U-A-H at csu.edu.